Hello, everybody. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started, I guess. Uh, my name is Mateen Feroz. I am the product manager for uh, Active Reports. So thank you again for uh, joining us for this webinar. Um, I'm really excited to share with you um, the new features that we have for um, Active Report 16. Um, so let's get uh, right to uh, these features. Um, so again, <clears throat> my name is Mateen Feroz. I've been uh, with Grape City for um, a little over 10 years now, um, and I've been managing Active Reports as part of the product management team um, uh, for about five years. Um, and uh, so we've just released Active Report 16, and I usually do these. Uh, webinars just to introduce you to some of these new features uh, that we have for um, uh, these releases. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, agenda. Um, the first thing, of course, um, uh, we're going to do a quick poll so that we know uh, essentially our uh, audience. Um, we are going to uh, go over some basics about active reports um, and then uh, get into the uh, features um, of V16. Um, namely, uh, we're going to go over uh, section reports and creating acro forms with section reports, uh, creating, um, you know, using the new chart wizards and the new data wizards. Um, excuse me. Uh, we're going to go over some of the chart upgrades. Uh, we're also going to go over some uh, page report enhancements. So, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the difference between section reports, page reports, and RDL reports. Um, we also have a new Blazor viewer. Uh, we've added some animations and uh, we have some uh, chart uh, or rather export enhancements as well. Now, this list, this list of features, of course, is not in uh, order of importance or rather order or, or, or value or anything like that. Um, it's rather, I put it in an order so that, uh, you know, when I go through the demo, I don't have to switch back and forth between uh, different windows and different screens uh, may uh, get a little uh, cumbersome and confusing for you guys. So I so basically ordered these features in a way that I can jumble some of these uh, features together and do a demo on a set of them um, um, and then switch back to the presentation. Um, as usual, if you guys have any questions, uh, Zoom has uh, the Q and A site, Q and A uh, feature. Uh, so feel free to post your questions in there. Um, and throughout the presentation, I'll try to stop and, and take a look to see what is there, what questions are there and sort of address those. Uh, but towards the end of the uh, session, we will also have uh, a Q and A session uh, at the end of the webinar. So um, feel free to either send your uh, questions through the Q and A, Q &A portal, or uh, you know, uh, we can do that at the end of the session as well. Um, now, before I actually get into the presentation, let me sort of um, ask you guys. Um, let's see, uh, who is, um, uh, who has, let's say, a year's experience working with um, active reports? Um, if you can raise your hand or, um, you know, somehow show uh, thumbs up or something, uh, to show that you have at least a year's of experience working with active reports. Uh, this basically helps me to sort of gear my presentation a little better so that I'm not repeating things that you guys already know. So appreciate you guys uh, for raising your hands here. <clears throat> okay, I see some chats as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. <clears throat> awesome, thank you guys. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's, um, uh, let's go and take a look at uh, active reports. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm going to launch a quick poll here. Um, again, just to sort of understand um, which types of reports you guys are using, those of you who are familiar with the different report types um, and um, you know which ones are you're using, if you could pick the ones. Awesome. Thank you guys for very, very quick responses. Awesome. You guys are awesome. All 
Okay. All right, so we have 22 responses and the majority of you guys are using uh, code-based section reports. A uh, very, very decent percentage is also using page reports and RDL reports and some um, XML-based uh, section reports as well. And we also have a couple of uh, new uh, users or um, um, uh, folks that are new to active reports. All right, let's go ahead and end the poll. Um, right, so let me share the results so you guys can see what's uh, what the results are as well. Um, and I'll go ahead and continue with the presentation as well here. So, okay, let me close this. All right. So very quickly, I know uh, the majority of you guys are already Active Reports customers, and you guys already know this. But for those who are not new or who may not know, um, you know, Active Reports has been in the business for quite some time. We had a lot of firsts in our history, um, and we have a huge amount of um, expertise uh, under our belt. Um, you know, we first and foremost, you know, when we talk to customers and we present Active Reports to customers, one of the biggest thing that we always tell customers is that we we got your back. Uh, right, so we have uh, you know a core uh, team of developers, sales, technical engagement engineers, um, product managers, specifically dedicated to Active Reports. It's not you know Active Reports and a bunch of other products and, and controls, but Active Reports specifically. Um, so we have this core group that's completely dedicated to uh, Active Reports, um, and uh, some of the features that you can uh, see listed here, um, you guys already are familiar with. Um, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, you know, uh, talking about active reports. You guys are pretty much familiar, and those who are not will get a chance to use active reports and learn um, about uh, what we have to offer. Um, okay, the first thing, as I mentioned, uh, section reports uh, enhancements. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Um, a few years ago, uh, we added a new control to page and RDL reports. This was the input field control. Uh, this control um, allows you to essentially create PDF forms using your reports, uh, using specifically those report types, RDL and page reports. Um, now that when the report was exported to PDF, those input field controls would be interactive so that the user can fill in either, either the, a text box or a check mark or check mark and check box, right? Um, now we subsequently got uh, several requests for the same functionality in section reports. So um, in this release, we've added these two particular uh, um, controls to the section report toolbox. And this is the input field text box and the input field um, check box. Uh, so similar to a page and RDL reports, now with section reports, you can also create uh, acro forms. You can you can create PDF forms uh, that will be interactive um, when they are exported to PDF. Um, the functionality of these controls is the same as with the page and RDL reports, uh, meaning uh, that they are interactive when they're exported to PDF. These controls are interactive. Excuse me, when they're exported to PDF, uh, but if they're exported to any other format, they will function as a regular text box and a regular checkbox. So if you export, for example, to Word document, they're not gonna be um, interactive in, in that sense, or I guess it would be because it's a Word document. Uh, but if you export to, for example, um, um, HTML, they won't be interactive as, as, as they are in um, PDF. Um, the second thing is that uh, you can data bind these controls so that you can give an initial value to these controls. And then when, they're, when the user exports or downloads the uh, report as a PDF, they can go ahead and actually, you know, um, fill in those values or alter uh, those values um, as in, in the PDF document itself. Um, and these properties, uh, you can set them <coughs> um, uh, at design time um, uh, and in, in the PDF as well. Uh, so the properties that you set at design time, for example, you know, the, the color of the text or, the, you know, the uh, font of the text. Those, uh, um, um, uh, the decoration, I should say, of the text can be, uh, will we'll basically maintain in the PDF. So we'll see this in the demo um, later on as well. So this is one thing about section reports. Um, the other thing, the other um, enhancement, the other feature that I wanted to bundle with this uh, section reports um, is a new wizard that we created. 
Um, so this wizard, actually a set of wizards, I guess I, I should say, uh, this wizard, the first one is a data wizard, data connection wizard. Um, and uh, the point of these wizards essentially is to help you uh, create reports uh, easier, faster, and you know, with less um, uh, with less effort. Uh, so, especially for new users, we want to get them um, uh, get them started quickly. Uh, especially uh, at the um, uh, end users as well. So, we want to make sure that we get them started uh, quickly using and creating reports with active reports. Um, so, we added these these two particular uh, wizards in this release. Um, uh, so the first of them, as I mentioned, is the data connection wizard. Um, and this is essentially a series of pop-ups uh, that prompt the user and helps them and guides them to create uh, a data connection. Um, uh, basically it launches regardless of the, the report type. So when you create a report, uh, either in the end user report designer or the standalone report designer or the visual studio report designer, um, when you create a, a report, uh, a, a, an instance of a report, or again, whether it's sexual reports or the other page, um, this, uh, these set of dialog boxes, they pop up uh, and they guide the user to create um, their data connection. So then after that, they can go ahead and create the layout. Um, now the, uh, the feature um, is only available in these three designers, right? So the desktop end user report designer, the standalone report designer, and the Visual Studio integrated report designer. It is not available in the web-based uh, report designer. Uh, the focus of the web-based report designer is a little bit different. They use uh, the user, tar target user uh, is a little bit different. So it doesn't make sense for us or it didn't make sense for us to add this functionality into the web-based report designer. Uh, now, for those of you who are experts in active reports, um, uh, you know, you can turn this off. You can turn this wizard off if you don't want this uh, wizard to be uh, shown and we'll go over this. But uh, essentially, there's a pop up dialog box and you just un un uncheck that box and uh, in, in, in the uh, standalone report designer or in the Visual Studio. Um, there's a config file. You just turn it off in the config file as well. The second wizard that we have, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and the second wizard is to create charts, uh, targeted to create charts. And uh, this wizard is basically, again, another way of simplifying this report creation process. So again, it walks you through uh, creating a basic chart with grouping, uh, and then for more advanced charting, uh, we provide like links and, you know, uh, um, uh, links to basically the respective areas that you want to modify and the respective um, elements of the chart that you wanted to modify. Um, and this particular wizard is available for page and RDL reports in um, our designers. So the web-based report designer, the uh, Visual Studio uh, and the um, desktop um, designers as well. Um, now, again, this is only available for page and RDL reports. Section reports already has this. Um, so it's not uh, a, anything missing from sexual reports in this regard. All right, I'm going to keep going. I know there are some, there's a question. I will um, come to the question in just a minute, uh, but I want to get uh, past this next screen because that's where we have our demo. Okay, so chart upgrades. Uh, one of the chart upgrades we already, already discussed, that was the, um, um, that was the, uh, the wizard uh, for creating charts, uh, but we also introduced uh, several uh, features, uh, several other features that are targeting uh, charts uh, specifically. Again, these are RDL and page report charts. Um, the first one, of course, is we added trend lines uh, to um, our charts, so you can now add trend lines to your charts, and that's not just you know one kind of trend trend line. Uh, but we have 13 different trend lines that you can choose, including like the linear, the polynomial, um, and the reference band. Um, so in our demo, we'll show the latter, we'll show the reference band chart. Um, we also added the possibility for you to customize um, the field names that appear in your legend or in the x-axis. For example, um, sometimes in your databases, you might have you know, uh, field names uh, that might not make sense to the user uh, that consumes a report, right? Uh, so for example, you might have a store ID or region ID uh, that might not correspond, you know, uh, intuitively for the end user, what that region ID means. 
Um, so uh, in, in, in this release, we added the possibility for you to customize these, I, these, these values, right? So these labels. So whether that is in the x-axis or uh, in your legend, um, so that when you when your users or when your consumers you know read these reports or see what's going on, uh, uh, read the charts, uh, they understand um, you know the data that's being presented them much more clearly. So it'll be much uh, more impactful to them as opposed to just sitting there and trying to figure things out. Um, now, in, in addition to these, uh, we added several other uh, features to chart controls as well, as you can see in this list, um, and we have you know, a lot more than we added here as well. Unfortunately for this time does not allow us to go through um, everything, but at the end I have a, a, a slide that basically lists these in a little more, um, uh, and, and lists these in, in, in uh, some format here. Okay, um, so let's go ahead um, and take a look at a demo. <laughs> okay, uh, let me bring up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up a report and this is essentially a uh, section report. So we're gonna start off with a section report, okay? Um, and this is just basically a, uh, a report that lists um, you know, a tabular view of a group of uh, uh, products, right? So grouped by category name. Um, very simple, right? Simple grouping. That's basically it. So it shows, you know, uh, orders basically of um, um, uh, these categories, right? These these products based on the category. Uh, let's take a look. Um, uh, let's let's preview this real quick. Uh, so when we preview this, just basically shows, you know, the list of uh, uh, products that are available based on the category, and there are six of them, right? So what we're going to show one of the features of uh, that, that we discussed earlier um, was the input field uh, controls. Um, so what I'm going to do is here are the two input field controls. So this is the input field um, uh, text box and the input field checkbox. I'm going to drag the input field text box right in the group header. Okay, I'm going to resize and I'm going to write a line and italicize. And in the properties panel, uh, I am going to go to the data field, select uh, select description, uh, and then let's change the text here a little bit. So let's change this to 11 point, and we want to uh, essentially change the color from black to, uh, let's say, gray. Okay, uh, let's preview this now. So we have the, <coughs> excuse me, we have the uh, text box here or the um, input field control here. Now, if I uh, export this, so I'm gonna hit the export button and we're gonna export to PDF. All right, so let's export this and we'll select the active reports. Yes. All right, let me bring up the active reports opened up on this side, All right? Here we go. So you have uh, in, in uh, what do you call it? In Adobe Reader, you have a text box basically or, or an edit editable field here that we can uh, edit, All right? That's basically it. And so a user can save it and then when they open open this report back up or this PDF back up, it's going to essentially keep this same um, uh, text here. Now you notice the the settings of the field remain. So I, I italicized the text, and the text is still italics when I change the text. So uh, the um, the features remain, right? The the settings rather remain. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, bring up the report again. Okay, and let's go back. So that's one thing, right? Um, the other thing that uh, we're going to, uh, the other thing that we're going to, um, uh, the other thing we're, we're gonna take a look at is the uh, wizard, the data connection wizard. So what I'm gonna do is just create a, a new report, right? So come on, I don't wanna save it. 
uh, let's say we want to create, uh, let's just say an RDL report, right? So let's create an RDL report. <clears throat> okay. And you see, as soon as I created the RDL report, it launches this uh, data wizard, right? Data connection or uh, data source uh, wizard. Um, now, you know, I can go ahead and start creating my uh, query. So I'm going to connect to my local uh, uh, SQL uh, client provider. Um, before I actually do that, let me point out, um, I'll do that later, actually, that's okay. Okay, so let's do localhost for this. Let's do Windows authentication and we'll do the Northwind database. Let me copy my, and as soon as I hit okay, the next dialog box pops up uh, and it asks me to um, create a query. So I'm gonna go ahead and create, uh, paste my query in, validate and hit okay, All right? And my data uh, set uh, comes through, all right. So this was the uh, data. Uh, uh, this was the uh, uh, data connection wizard, right? Uh, now, if we wanted to uh, um, turn this off uh, in this particular designer, how do we do that? We essentially, you know, if I click, I guess I'm going to have to um, hit no here, right? So uh, if when this pops up, you can see right here that launch data source wizard that's checked off. So uh, checked marked. So if I uncheck this, then the data wizard is not going to pop up. So let's uh, create a new data wizard. Now the RDL report is created, but nothing popped up, right? So again, let's recreate a new report. Nothing pops up. Um, so if I wanted to, I could go ahead and uh, recheck mark this, right, again. And uh, the data wizard will pop up. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this connection once more. All right, and there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> the next thing that I want to uh, show here is the chart wizard. That was a second feature that we talked about, uh, the chart wizard. So what I'm gonna do is every time that I drop a chart to the design surface, um, it's going to launch the chart wizard. So if I drag and drop, right, it launches uh, the chart wizard here for us, right? Um, all right, let's uh, go ahead uh, and take a look uh, what we're going to do essentially. Um, now, uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, actually uh, for, for this particular chart, I'm going to create another data set. So let's go ahead and right click, uh, add a data set, uh, oops, sorry at a data source, I should say, because I'm going to be um, binding to JSON data file. Let's go ahead and embed this. And what I'm gonna do is right here, right? Mm, okay, so let's go to here and get that. There you go, right? Um, all right, and let's add the data set, query editor, and there we go. All right, so uh, let me delete that and add the chart again. All right, and it's gonna prompt me which data source I wanna use, data set. So I'm gonna choose data set two. <clears throat> and I'm gonna leave this as the column bar chart, column chart, okay, uh, go next. And here is where I can actually start binding um, the uh, values from the data set two. Um, <clears throat> my uh, chart, right? So the field uh, essentially um, is going to be the, uh, the what's gonna be on the Y axis, right? So this is where we're gonna say um, average points at home. Um, so this is obviously a uh, teams, uh, um, uh, some, some, uh, some, some sports team uh, scores um, and the categories, uh, data categories, that's what the X axis is going to hold. And this is going to be how many you know, games um, and we can do subcategories. This is essentially going to do some grouping for us. So, excuse me, um, if I select, for example, uh, team, okay? Uh, that's basically all that I have to do. So if I click next, um, it's going to tell me or allow me to choose, you know, the palettes that I have available 
Um, so let me drop this down. Let's choose modern. Um, and that's basically it, right? So this is the chart that's created for me. Um, now, if I wanted to go in and, and change some things around, say I want to change the, change the title, right? So I go to chart header. If I wanted to change the X axis or the Y axis, I go to the uh, respective areas. Um, I'm going to leave everything as is and just click finish. Okay, so this created a chart for us, right? And if I click, you can see the encodings, the team, the team uh, is in details as well as in color and the um, average points at home in the game are here as well. All right, uh, let's, uh, if I preview this now, it's just basically going to be a uh, simple chart. Um, and because it is a smaller size, it doesn't look very good. So let's make it a little bit bigger because we want to, um, we want to um, add a reference line here. Okay, so how do we add a uh, legend, uh, sorry, not a legend, a trend line here. How do we add a trend line? The first thing we're gonna do is go to uh, the uh, plot, select the plot, and we have a new overlays property here, if you can see, overlays property. So I'm gonna click on the ellipsis and we're gonna add an overlay. And this is basically where the chart um, uh, trend lines come in, right? So if you look at the, uh, the type, here's a reference line, but we're gonna choose the reference band. We could choose, for example, the um, polynomial trend line or the linear trend line, but for this, I'm just going to use the band, okay? Um, so each one of these obviously has its own properties that we can set uh, for the purposes of this band. It has you know, the uh, start and end uh, configurations. Um, so let's go ahead and change these. So the display, I'm gonna do back. So it's gonna be behind my chart series. Uh, let's say that the start, I want to do 20 and the end, I want to do 30, right? Off the y-axis. Uh, let's give it a background color. Let's say we want to do like Gainsborough. Uh, and let's, you know, if we wanted to change the uh, line color, the outline of this box, we could do that as well. I'm going to leave it as is, right? So now we have, you see this band that is created here. So now if I preview this now, is gonna give me, you know, this reference band, maybe the highest scoring, you know, games um, of, uh, um, of, of, this, of these particular teams um, is, is shown here, all right? Um, again, you know, uh, uh, there are tons of different trend lines that I could use, but for the purposes of this demo, um, and this particular data set, this is what made sense. So uh, we did the reference band. All right. <clears throat> the other thing that we can do um, is uh, we can change the legend, okay? Uh, change the field name in our legend. And for this, I'm going to actually bring up another report. All right. So this is a pre-made report that I have. Um, so, <coughs> Excuse me, a pre-made report that I have. So now uh, let me uh, change this here real quick uh, to give you an idea of what uh, this does. Okay, so um, let me go back and change some of these. All right, so uh, if I preview this now, you see the chart uh, basically shows product ID count and your price min, right? Um, so um, these labels are not very intuitive. I mean, it's understandable, right? It's understandable, but if we wanted to improve the, the, the presentation, we could do that with, um, you know, by, by customizing um, the, the text that appears there, right? Um, so what we're gonna do to, to make that happen is, uh, we, again, we're gonna plot, select the plot. Uh, so this chart has two plots. Um, we can select plot one, select the data field and go to values, right? And in the caption, let's add uh, product count. Right? And then select plot two, go to unit price. And although this is set as min, let's just say we wanna say this is the average price of the uh, product in each category. So now when you already saw that, you know, the, the, the legend changes, uh, when we preview, uh, you see that the the um, the text is a little more understandable, a little more presentable, and you know more intuitive, and uh, you know it just it just presents better. 
Um, so again, you know, uh, these are uh, some of the features that are incorporated or included um, in um, version 16, specific to section reports and specific to uh, charts, okay? Continuing on, <clears throat> let's see, let me actually go to the questions. So is input field text box can be masked as a numeric or any other type? Um, so uh, it essentially it's going to be like a text box, right? So uh, are you, uh, if you're asking if it is going to be like um, a data type of a numeric, uh, it's, actually, it's essentially going to be a, 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 a text box. So the, the data in it is going to be a text uh, data type, if that answers your question mark. Um, all right. We're going to continue on, um, and if there are further questions, again, we're going to uh, we're going to circle back to them. Um, all right. So we went through the demo. <laughs> My pleasure. Okay. The next feature uh, within uh, Active Report 16 is uh, page report enhancement. So this is a good place for uh, taking a quick break and sort of um, discussing the different report types. So we looked at section reports, obviously section reports are the classic report types with the different bands, right? So the report header, the group header uh, and footer, um, the detail band. Um, so that's basically the banded report type. Uh, it is also um, event driven. Uh, so you, know, you, you can hook into the different events that fire throughout the report execution process and customize the uh, report to your needs. Um, we then have the um, page report and RDL reports. You saw me using RDL reports when I was creating charts. Um, and these particular report types, page and RDL, they are um, uh, from a feature perspective, uh, they are a little more feature packed than, than charts. For example, page and RDL have um, uh, text box, uh, sorry, not text box, uh, tables and tablices, uh, whereas uh, in section reports, you have to create those uh, manually. Uh, you know, cell by cell. Um, that's basically, uh, you know, one of the differences. And obviously, page and report, page and RDL reports have certain controls that, um, you know, the, the section reports don't. Uh, and uh, to sort of help with the dynamic reporting feature, these report types um, have expression support. So you can use very complex expressions to uh, create runtime dynamic reports. Okay. Now, page reports are very, very unique uh, in that. Um, uh, they are very layout driven. So you essentially design the layout of every single page that you want, right? So for example, if you have reports that need to be very, very like pixel perfect, that everything needs to be in its place, it cannot, you know, the, the controls cannot expand and, uh, you know, they cannot push other controls out of the way, uh, then, you know, page reports is what you need. So, you know, for very structured reports, like, for example, like, you know, legal forms, uh, this is what you want to use. Um, so with these types of reports, because you're designing every single page, uh, you know, we introduce some um, features to help with this, right? Because again, this, these requests, most of these uh, come from our customers, um, and this was no, no different. So it, it was something that, you know, a use case that our customers had. And so we um, uh, saw the need to essentially uh, fill, um, uh, fill that, that gap for them. Um, so what we have here, we have uh, with page reports, you can create uh, mixed layout uh, pages. Uh, so for example, page one can be landscape, page two can be portrait or vice versa, right? Or page three can go back to uh, being a, a different kind, or, you know, they could have each page can have a different size, each page can have uh, different margins. Uh, so you're essentially designing the entire layout of a page, um, uh, you know, using the um, using the designers, um, or alternatively, you could do this in code as well. Um, now, uh, with regards to exports, this uh, mixed page layout, this is supported. Uh, it supports basically PDF, HTML, and image exports. Um, the other exports are not currently supported. Uh, so Word uh, and Excel, obviously. OK. Um, the other feature with regards to this, you know, the, 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 the mixed page orientation is that we added a visibility.hidden property to each page element, okay? To each page container, we added this visibility. So that means that at runtime, you can control, you know, if you want to show that particular page or not, maybe you want to hide it. Um, and uh, you can uh, take that a, little, a step further and use a toggle item. So for example, a text box, uh, you can set a text box so that when the user clicks on 
that icon in the text box, um, the page is hidden or a uh, page is shown. Um, and this is something that we're going to demo uh, in a little bit. Um, so I preview that whatever specific page that you set to be hidden will be hidden. Um, again, uh, in this instance, say you have five pages and you've hidden three of them and you export, uh, let's say to PDF, right? Um, our exports are WYSIWYG. So whatever you see at preview, that is basically what's going to be exported, right? Um, so instead of having all the five pages exported, you will see only the three pages exported because that is what you wanted to see at preview. And so when you export, that is what you're going to get. Um, so again, you know, this, all of this can be controlled in code or uh, in uh, the designers. Um, so uh, we're gonna go take a look at this uh, feature. Um, in just a little bit, okay? Um, I'm actually really excited about this particular feature because again, it's something that I think a lot of our uh, page report users will find very beneficial, but I leave the judgment to you guys. Uh, the next feature is a Blazor viewer. Uh, so the Blazor viewer is something new. Uh, we of course <coughs> had um, you know, several report uh, viewer components uh, um, in, in, in our lineup. Um, uh, we, uh, we have the WinForms, the WPF, and for the uh, ASP.NET web forms, web forms, we have web viewer control. And for .NET and .NET Core MVC, we have the JS viewer control. Now, with this release, we have the um, uh, Blazor uh, viewer. And this is basically, um, you know, a shell, uh, a Blazor shell around the JS viewer. Now, and we did that because we have a large user base uh, of, of JS customers using the JS viewer. And it's also the JS viewer is also one of, uh, you know, the most powerful report viewers on the market. So uh, from its from a rendering capacity perspective and performance perspective, um, it's, 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 you know, pretty powerful. Uh, so it made sense for us to create this new Blazor viewer by wrapping the JS viewer in this Blazor shell. Um, so that brings, um, you know, to C-sharp developers, uh, the all the perks of the JS viewer, right? So whether that's the versatile uh, APIs, whether that's the, uh, the the intuitive layout and the and the, and the friendly UI, um, uh, and, and probably something that our uh, users find uh, most appealing is the customizability. So now you know C sharp developers can embed this control in their uh, Blazor, whether server side or client side applications. Um, now, of course, similar to <coughs> excuse me, similar to the JS viewer, uh, the Blazor viewer, um, you know, uh, it, it's um, uh, it's basically a full out, you know, report viewer component. Um, it supports all of the report types, so the section reports, page, and RDL reports are supported. Um, all of the export formats are supported. Uh, you know, from uh, all of the 13, uh, 14 plus uh, formats that we have, all of that is supported. Interactivity, all of that. Um, is going to be part of uh, this uh, viewer control, as well as, as I mentioned before, the customizability where you can customize and add custom buttons and custom toolbars um, to the viewer. Okay, um, all right, I think we are due for a demo. All right, let's uh, go um, do our demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, open up a report here. Okay, so here, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I have a basic invoice, uh, and you can see that it has two pages. Okay, in this first page, page one, uh, it just basically have has the bill to ship to, uh, order number, and you know date, and it has just basics, right? So how many products were ordered, how much the total was, the subtotal, discount, and the uh, you know the total total, <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, it has that, and that's basically it, right? So it's just basically a summary on this first page, and the second page. This is where we have the itemized list of everything that was purchased, right? So you have, for example, you know the products and, and the quantities and the prices for each uh, product that was purchased. You have that here. Now uh, we can set, uh, we can set, uh, rather change the um, layout of the second page. Let's say that the first page was set to be a portrait. We're going to change. We're so we've selected the second page. You can see. Uh, we're going to go to the page orientation. Let's change this to landscape. Okay, so this changes the second page to landscape. Uh, we can change the page size as well. So let's change it to, let's say, B5. 
Why not? Okay. Yeah, I did it. Okay. Um, and then we can also change the margin. So if we wanted to, let's say, you know, change everything to 0.5, we could do that, right? So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5, right? So everything basically changed. Uh, we can then expand the table a little bit. Um, and that's basically it, right? So if we go uh, select uh, page one again, go to page one, all right? And in page one, we have a text box here that says, that says show hide itemized purchases, right? This is text box 36. So we're gonna keep that in mind, go back and select page two, okay? And when we go to the properties of page two, uh, we have this visibility property. See, uh, let's make this uh, page page two hidden by default because this is going to have about 800 pages <laughs> this report. So we don't wanna take too much time uh, uh, waiting for page two to render. So rather we're gonna hide it for each grouping. We're gonna hide it uh, so that when we click for group one, uh, is gonna render page two for group one and not for the other groups. So we'll see how that works. Um, for the toggle item, we're gonna say uh, text box 36, right? Okay, so let's preview this, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so 830 pages. And you see there is an icon that's added to this particular uh, uh, text box. Um, so if I click this, now we have, come on, 831, right? So go page two, here is my, my, my table on page two. Page three is, you know, uh, the basic uh, summary. And if I click the expand again, we have page four created. Um, so again, you know, uh, this is, uh, you know, very, very simple, but useful, I think, very useful feature that we've implemented for um, page reports, okay? Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take a look at uh, the Blazor uh, viewer. So let's go ahead and actually what I'm going to do is let's uh, let's go back. Let's save this. So I saved this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I don't know. Let's actually create a new instance and we'll create a new. Okay. Come on. Okay. Let's create a new project. And when I create a new project, one of the things with the Blazor viewer um, is that um, we have the uh, templates, project templates available for you. So if I say active report 16 Blazor, we have the Blazor uh, server application and the web assembly application. So let's, I'm gonna use the server. Uh, it's much simpler to create that. So um, say webinar demo. All right, um, so what I'm going to do is hit create and it'll take its time to create uh, this project for us. <coughs> All right, so while it's creating and it opens up on my other screen, so I need to bring it over. Uh, come on, Visual Studio. All right. There we go, right? So we have the Razor pages, we have uh, the reports folder, um, and we have the um, uh, dependencies and everything being brought in uh, in a minute here. Okay. All right, so let's expand this uh, reports and right click. And let's say we wanna add existing item. We wanna add that same report that we just created. So uh, uh, was it again? It was the invoice, right? Um, and we're going to uh, use this viewer to basically take a look at it. Um, so let's go to pages. Under pages, we'll do uh, Razor, uh, the index page. And this is where we have, you know, passing in the uh, report name to the viewer. So, and my computer is getting slower. Okay, there we go. All right. So now if I, uh, one thing I, I need to do, I guess, is every time we add a report 
item here, we need to sell, set the build action as an embedded resource. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error and say you can't find the report. All right, so let's run it. And it's going to um, launch in some browser. I don't know, maybe um, Edge. And it's going to hopefully show us the uh, viewer control with this particular um, report in it. And of course, it opens up on my other screen. Come on. <clears throat> okay, here's the report, right? So uh, <coughs> still loading all the pages, right? 830 pages to start with. Uh, when we hit the plus icon, it's gonna reload uh, and it's gonna give us the 831st page or the, I guess, second page in order. Um, or, you know, so it gives us that interact inter, uh, interaction that is uh, you know, built into the, um, the viewer control of course, the navigation, the, the panning and zooming, um, all of that is built in. The filtering and the different view modes, uh, right? Continuous page uh, versus uh, the single page view. Um, uh, let's see, the exports are here as well, right? So if we wanted to export this to PDF, we can do that. All right. Uh, that's basically it for um, this part of the demo. Uh, let me minimize this and minimize this and go back to our presentation. We're kind of running short on time. So I'm gonna sort of speed up here a little bit. And this is the last bit of our, um, of our uh, presentation too. So we'll, we'll kind of speed everything up. Um, animations, uh, animations, we added certain animations in this release. Um, of course, the chart load and chart hover, as you can see in the GIF or GIF, uh, we added the table hover uh, animation as well. Um, these animations obviously are part of the viewer. Uh, so they are part of the viewer itself, not part of the report. Um, and so they are supported in the JS viewer and the web viewer controls. Now, um, uh, 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 essentially enabling this animation is really one line of code uh, that you would, you would put in to enable the animation. Um, for uh, the chart animations though, the, uh, the viewers, need those two uh, um, files, the jsviewer.chart.min.js and CSS files. Uh, so those resources need to be uh, included in your project uh, and referenced and linked in your pages um, to be able for the chart to be able to animate uh, as shown here, okay? Uh, so we'll, we'll go over this uh, animation and turning on the animations. Of course, by default, they're off. Uh, but you can turn them on again, you know, uh, with really one line of code. Um, the second part of uh, this demo that we're going to show is in uh, the exports enhancement. So <coughs> uh, you noticed how in the uh, Blazor viewer that uh, when we expanded the exports panel on the left-hand side, the Excel and PDF, each one of those has its own uh, settings, right? It's its own unique uh, settings. Um, some some of the settings are shared across a different um, uh, exports, but then each uh, um, export format has also very unique settings as well. Um, now, uh, in this release, uh, we essentially did a couple of things. The first thing is that we um, uh, added a new file file name uh, setting, so that when your users download the reports, they can uh, you know give it a file name instead of you know the report being downloaded as the report name. Uh, as, as is usually done before uh, this release. Um, now they can give it their own custom name. Uh, users can give their own custom name. The second thing is uh, they can pass, you rather can pass preset values to each of those settings, uh, the, those export settings. So whether that's the author, whether that's encryption or version, uh, you can pass preset values. And when you pass those preset values, maybe you don't want your users to change those values, right? So uh, you might want to hide those values. So now you can do that as well. So you can pass preset values and you have control to, you know, whether you want to show those settings or you want to hide those settings. Um, 
so essentially that gives you complete control over the exports, right? So as a developer, as, a, as, as the business you know, uh, entity, you have control, complete control on how uh, your reports are downloaded um, and, and, uh, and in what way. Right, so not only just limiting you know, the different report, uh, the export formats, but also you know each element within each export format can be limited. Um, so again, you can set you can set default values for each of those settings and uh, optionally hide them if you want. Um, and, and these settings can be set either in uh, code, uh, for example, in the JS viewer, uh, as we'll see, or in for the for the case of the web viewer, this should say web viewer, not web designer. For the case of the web design web viewer, um, it can be set in uh, the design design time uh, in Visual Studio. Um, all right, let's quickly take a look because we're very quickly running out of time. All right, so I'm going to bring up a JS viewer application here. This is uh, a sample uh, application from our uh, uh, GitHub page. Uh, so you see, I've already added the chart main uh, uh, CSS and JS files. I have them linked uh, and referenced here, right? That one rather. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, that's basically it. So for the animation, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, copy some code here, all right, to show you the animation. So in the load or the create uh, method, right? Right there, we can just go ahead and paste. So animation uh, uh, and then the chart load, uh, chart hover and the table hover, uh, setting all of those you know to true and giving a background color to the um, table hover. That's basically all that it takes, right? To 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 uh, basically implement the animations. The second piece of this demo is the default settings. Okay, so I'm going to highlight. I'm going to actually bring in some code from my notes here. <laughs> And paste this. So what I'm doing here, right? So we're getting get, passing in default export settings, and specifically for PDF. Okay, so for PDF, there are uh, four things at the top here, uh, four uh, settings. Uh, so file name I'm passing as uh, this is going to be the file name for the downloaded PDF, and I don't want it to be visible. So I don't want myself in this case to change the value of the file name. Um, you know, the author is going to be me, and I want the I want them to be able to change it if they want it. Uh, the application is the same thing, and uh, you know, I pass a, a preset value and the embedded fonts. I pass a preset value. By default, all of these settings, all of these are visible unless you change it to visible equals false, right? So here, for example, the convert to meta. I don't want my, you know, I, I want to hide everything else that you see here, right? I want to hide everything else uh, that you see here. Uh, I just want to be able to show only these three settings. So now let's quickly uh, preview this because we have about five minutes left and I have like two or three more slides to go through and I want to give enough time for uh, Q&A as well. I know there are some chats. I will get to those uh, very, very uh, shortly. Bear with me just a minute here. <clears throat> okay, uh, so the chart, the uh, uh, the JS viewer, come on. I think there's something wrong in the code because it should load. Okay, let's stop that. That's part of that, that's part of that. That and that's the problem. Okay. We got that, we got that, we got that, and we got that. Okay, that should be good. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so while this is loading, I'm gonna take make use of the time and go to the chat. Um, yes, so uh, the recording will be available. So you will get a um, you will get a uh, email later on that uh, basically gives you the projects that I created, the samples that I created, the uh, recording, and the presentation. So all of that will be available to you guys. I should have mentioned that at the beginning, but thank you for asking and bringing that up again. 
Um, okay, uh, let's keep going. Uh, so you see the chart load, right? So if I refresh uh, the chart loads and the animations, you can see um, if I go to a different report, uh, you can see chart loading the hover, you know, uh, and the table hover as well, okay? And very quickly to show the exports, the default exports for Excel. But if I go to PDF, only, you know, these pieces, right? The three, the three elements that, that we uh, said we, were, we wanted to show. Uh, that's basically it for this, okay? So I'm going to close this. I am going to uh, minimize this and let's keep going for the sake of time. All right, so other minor features. So we have two new uh, barcode symbologies. Um, for the page and RDL reports, uh, we also added um, uh, not only for page, yeah, for page and RDL reports, basically we added the uh, tracking report rendering and the exporting status. And again, this came from one of our customers. Uh, you know, they have like uh, reports, some of them have reports that are thousands of pages and uh, they want to basically be able to track uh, how many pages of the report has been rendered so far or have been exported so far. Um, so that's part of it. Um, and if it's taking too long, then they can go ahead and cancel the report rendering or exporting. That's another feature that we implemented as well. The keep together property for table and tablets grouping. So uh, this is available in page reports. It was previously available in uh, RDL reports as well. So if you have a table grouped, uh, this feature is going to try to keep the groups together instead of being split onto multiple pages. Um, that's the understanding of uh, keep together property. Um, the uh, SVG images, uh, you can use those now in RDL and page. So regardless if you're using uh, image control or you can set the SVG image as a background image to another control. Say for example, like a shape control um, or the container control, something like that. You can use um, an SVG image as the background. Um, the Visual Studio and end user report designer uh, dialog boxes, uh, you can, you can um, uh, resize them. So if, for example, if you have a small laptop screen, uh, you can, they can be resized to fit <coughs> the screen size, excuse me. The field selection order. So uh, this is the burger menu that shows up like in, in um, text boxes so that you can select your fields and page and RDL reports. Um, there was a very, very specific use case where that needed to be hidden. Um, so we added that opportunity or that ability to hide. Um, those field selection donors. Uh, for CSV files, there is a decimal data type now. Yeah, we had float, but now we've added decimal, you know, for very, 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 very accurate numbers. Um, Tablix can break uh, pages. So the Tablix control that expands Tablix obviously is the like a pivot table. So it expands vertically and horizontally. Now, when a Tablix is viewed like this, like a, like a large screen, uh, active reports will generally uh, break the report or paginate the report vertically, right? So this is N, right? N, N format. Uh, so break it column by column. Now you can set it to break by uh, horizontally first. So, you know, break it like this, the second page, then third page, and then uh, coming back down to the next row. So break broken down by column or by row. All right, very quickly, my spiel. I know we're uh, over time a little bit. Um, so uh, the next thing that you're going to do is after we end this demo, uh, this uh, uh, um, uh, webinar, you're going to get a very short post, post session survey. Um, this basically helps me to prepare better uh, for our next demos and gives you the opportunity to you know, request specific demos or on, on specific topics. So you know, any ideas you guys have would be appreciated. Uh, we uh, you know, like to do these uh, webinars. Um, so if you have uh, suggestions, please share them. We always want to hear from you. So whether whatever it is, whether you have feature requests or bugs or, you know, uh, uh, feedback, whatever it is, we want to hear from you. So feel, you know, do uh, stay in touch with us. You have my email address. Feel free to send it. Um, you can always uh, take a look at our uh, web page as well. Uh, you can find a ton of resources on there as well. Um, so I will open it up for questions and answers. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, the um, chat and the questions panels um, and, and answer the questions that are there. But if anybody has any questions besides those, uh, please uh, let me know. 
So Kevin is asking, we are on AR12, should we upgrade? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you should, um, you know, especially if you want to take advantage of .NET uh, 6 uh, and everything that it has to offer. Definitely, I, I would suggest upgrading. Um, you know, since Active Reports 12, we have uh, a ton of new features that I think you would very, very much, uh, you know, benefit from. Uh, one of them being the web-based report designer. So if you are using uh, or giving ability to your end users to create reports, uh, I think the web-based report designer uh, is a huge, huge, uh, you know, uh, a thing that you could give them instead of, uh, you know, uh, them asking you for changing a report layout or whatever else. Um, so, uh, you know, that in and of itself, I think, is a huge benefit to you guys. Um, so, uh, you know, ultimately, it does uh, depend on your use of active reports. If you're just basically creating reports, scanned reports that are uh, downloaded at certain times, uh, you know, at a certain interval, um, you know, or, or on demand by even by, by your customers, just downloaded, not previewed or anything else, I think, you know, uh, you, you should be okay. But if you need any of the features that we've talked about today or previous in previous webinars, um, you know, definitely, definitely upgrade. Um, like I said, um, we have a ton of features that this particular um, version includes that I haven't even talked about. Um, and, and the same thing with previous versions as well. So, uh, you know, if you would like to um, schedule a time to talk a little bit more, you know, a one on one, Kevin, send me an email um, and uh, we can do that. So, um, I'm going to type my email uh, here. And you know, feel free to uh, email email me, and we'll set up, set up a time to basically go over you know uh, the features that you need. And um, you know, I'll, I'll honestly tell you if you if you should upgrade or not based on those needs. I, I mean, I don't want you to you know, uh, go through the trouble of paying and and, and 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 upgrading to a new version if you don't have to. So I'll honestly tell you, uh, you know, what features are available and what features you will benefit from, and you know, um, you can take it from there. Um, all right, so in the uh, chat section, um, Rajesh, uh, runtime, JSON, can bind any samples. So yeah, we do have uh, some samples and documentation, Rajesh, on um, uh, runtime data binding with uh, you know, dynamic JSON uh, files. Um, uh, if you look at our documentation, uh, you will find that there. So if you go to our, our, our documentation page, uh, you will find that there. If you don't, just again, shoot me an email. I will point you exactly to, to that uh, link. Um, and we do have some samples there as well. Um, okay, is there a training class that we can attend to learn all tools uh, just in a few days? So Jeff, uh, yes, we do offer training. It is, it is paid training, but it is um, you know, completely um, uh, geared towards your needs. So if you have very specific needs, um, you know, uh, or you want to learn, you know, something uh, very specific about active reports, um, you know, we tailor the training uh, to your needs and to your uh, uh, reporting needs in your situation. Um, so, yeah, we do offer training. Um, it is paid and you just need to contact our uh, sales team uh, to get um, the information. So let me just back up here. And this is, um, you know, the, um, uh, the sales uh, email. And anybody that wants to schedule a time with me, just use this Camelly link and just schedule a time, okay? <clears throat> All right, uh, is upgrade from previous version still just a simple upgrade through the menu in Visual Studio? Exactly, that's exactly right, John. Um, it's just basically upgrade to Visual Studio, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, not Visual Studio, Active Report 16 um, and from the tools menu. That's basically it. Um, Okay, Mick says we currently use V11 and localization was always a pain point for us. Um, has localization mechanism changed at all? It has actually, Mick. Um, depending on, um, you know, what element or what feature, uh, you know, what component of active reports you are wanting to change, uh, that it has changed. Uh, so, for example, I know the uh, web-based report designer localization uh, was a little bit difficult where you had to include some, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, resource files. Um, that has been made simpler in this release. Again, you know, there's a lot of things that we included in version 16 that I did not get a chance to talk about. So I'm glad you're asking these questions because I can now bring them up. Uh, so localization has improved 
um, in, um, in Active Report 16. So uh, if you don't have a license for Active Report 16, you know, I definitely, definitely recommend uh, getting the trial license and, 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 and taking a look and, and to see how, uh, you know, everything has changed and how you can uh, essentially use the new features and, um, you know, sort, sort of address some of those pain points that you have. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, that, that answers your question, Nick. If not, you know, please let me know. Um, is there any way to implement animation on WPF and one for viewers? Um, so animation currently is only available in JS and web viewer controls, uh, not in the other um, report viewers. Uh, we can take that as a feature request um, if it is something that you need, uh, but currently it is not available in those, um, in those viewers. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, and Mick is saying, uh, I may have missed it. Uh, is the viewer and designer available in WPF? So we do have a WPF viewer. Um, we do not have a WPF designer. Um, so the designer for desktop applications, essentially it's a win for us designer. So you, uh, you, uh, you, you probably can wrap that like in a, in a, in a WPF application, uh, but that's pretty much it. We don't have anything specific for WPF as a, um, um, as a designer. <clears throat> uh, are there any limitations on having other versions of AR installed at the same time as AR16? Um, so no, John, there are no limitations to that. The only thing, uh, the only thing that I would say, oh, okay, so let me back this up a little bit. Um, the only thing that I would say is that uh, I believe it was version 14 uh, or yeah, 14, I believe, uh, so from 14 to 16, you, you will be fine. Uh, there, there's no issues at all. Um, because essentially at that point, we migrated to NuGet packages. So you're not going to have issues. Um, the only thing that you, you won't be able to do is use the same version or multiple versions in, a same project, in the same project. Um, so if you have multiple, different projects that use different versions, that's absolutely fine. Um, some, you, might, you might face some issues if you're using, for example, older versions of um, Active Reports along with you know, uh, Active Reports 16. So for example, Active Reports 12, 11, 10, uh, where the DLLs and the assemblies, you know, they weren't like NuGet packages, they were actually assemblies installed on your machine. Uh, so you might have a GAC issue at that point uh, because we relied on, on some specific, <laughs> excuse me, like uh, Newton.json, uh, uh, Newton.json DLLs and, and some other DLLs um, that uh, are, are, you know, maybe very version specific. So, you know, if you have older versions like that, like, uh, you know, 12 and 11 and 10, uh, you might have some issues, uh, you know, in, in that regard. But again, if you're using them um, on, um, in different projects, um, then you uh, won't have that issue um, if you're using version 14, 15, and 16, for example, um, in, in different projects. Okay. Um, I believe that is it. Um, any, anything else uh, before we end for today? I know it's been, um, you know, it's been, it's been uh, a, a longer session. Um, so I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, it's a pleasure, Mick. Um, is there ability to add date filters or any other type of filters? Um, yeah, so we do have we do have filtering capacity uh, within Active Reports uh, that is available in in our documentation. Um, and the web designer, the web viewer, and the JS viewer actually has uh, have a um, advanced parameter panel creation. So if you want very advanced, you know, custom parameter panels with custom controls. Uh, we have that facility available in the web-based report designer uh, to create such a parameter panel uh, and present that to your viewers. So yeah, I mean, uh, regardless of, you know, da uh, data type or, uh, you know, uh, filter type, uh, we have that functionality available. Um, Visual Studio ID, which license needs to purchase? Um, so I think, you know, anything uh, aside from like a, like a community edition, you should be fine. Um, uh, there's no specific... Uh, you know, professional or enterprise level that, that we require Visual Studio. So as long as you have a instance of Visual Studio, uh, you know, not the uh, community one, um, you're, you're going to be fine. Um, so let me go ahead and end at this point. Okay, guys, um, again, you have my email address. Um, it, it, feel free to send me an email. Feel free to schedule a call if you'd like uh, to talk about anything. Uh, but I want to go ahead and end the session with respect to everybody's time. I appreciate you guys staying uh, staying behind a little bit. 
Um, and again, if you have the opportunity, please uh, fill out the, uh, the survey. Uh, that is going to be a, a huge help for me. Um, okay. Uh, thank you, guys. I will see you guys uh, in the next um, uh, in the next uh, webinar. Okay. Bye bye.